Hi everyone. Um, I'm just mutching about the house and I've received the package. I received it earlier um, but I was due to go for a swim. I've just had a swim and I feel nice and mellow. I've just come through the door now and uh, received this package. Or should I say um, came back home to this package. I received it earlier. Yeah. Masking tape, look, you see? Now, masking tape <laughs> was a theme in our household many years ago. My dad would use masking tape all the time. He was an SAS soldier. My Uncle Pete was SAS, my Uncle Len, my great Uncle Len, he was SAS. And it was all masking tape and stuff from the stores. <laughs> so when I received this package and saw that there was masking tape on it, it kind of felt like a, a Jickles signature. But I know what's in it and I'd like to share it with you. There's a painting in here, which has been done by <clears throat> my Aunt Val up north. It's um, been sent by my Uncle Mick, both of whom were um, related to my dad. My Aunt Val is my dad's sister and my Uncle Mick is my dad's younger brother. Wonderful family, love them all. So I am really looking forward to seeing how this picture appears, this painting. It's a kingfisher and I want to use this as an opportunity to share with you what my kingfisher logo means to me. You can see the kingfisher logo on um, my YouTube channel. It's beautiful, it's hand painted, a bit like this. Well, no, <laughs> I don't know what this is like yet. We've yet to see. But yeah, the Kingfisher logo is hand painted and there are Kingfishers all over in my home. I'll show you one or two. Here's a Kingfisher. There's a Kingfisher. Next to a tablet. That's a tablet in there. There's a brass. There's a brass piece in there that opens up. It says H2O. That was created. I'll show you it quickly. There's the spare piece. It's uh A door plate <clears throat> that was on the uh, Hereford swimming baths. Uh, what they did was they they tore out the old doors, the entrance to the entrance, and replaced them with automated doors. And Paul one night went to the skips and retrieved the plates off the doors that were used for the hands. You know, push. And this is what it looks like. Oh, Isn't that beautiful? It says push. So this has been handmade. See the bevel there? It's been handmade, hand carved, H2O by a good friend of ours called Nigel Sturgeon who in actual fact was the guy behind the round table which features in the River Door video if you check out the link and Paul got it done to celebrate swimming his love for water the 
the brass plate, uh, of course, coming from Hereford Swimming Baths, the door, the doors. So that's one kingfisher and a water feature. Well, wow, there's a kingfisher over here. There's another kingfisher. And that's beside a sculpture which is of natural vine that came out of the River Wye. Paul and I pulled that out of the River Wye years ago. Probably 15, 16 years ago. Well, Paul did. He spotted it. And we both carried it home. It was really heavy. It was full of mud. And he spent months cleaning it, drying it out, and that's the result. It's just beautiful. I remember Paul sat night after night with little tiny tools cleaning that up. And that's next to a kingfisher. There's another kingfisher here. That's three in the living room. <laughs> this one was painted by my Auntie June. And she gave it me just after Paul died. In memory of Paul. And I'll tell you what the kingfisher means to us, means to our family shortly. But here's the painting that my Auntie June did. She lives in Colchester. There it is. Not beautiful. Whoop. There you go. So that sits on my wall there. So that's three. We've yet to open that package. Here you go, guys. Here's uh, a bit of a gallery celebrating my dad. Uh, I'll let that light on uh, come on first. It, it comes on quite slowly. Here's another kingfisher. This one's in the bathroom. That was given me by my mum, I think when I was 40 years of age. I've had it for some years. It's a beautiful image. I was given one and Paul was given one. In actual fact, I walked straight past it. So. I'll show you that before I show you the gallery which celebrates my dad's life. Right, okay. Here's the one that mum gave Paul on the same birthday, which is now in the hall. But this was hung up in Paul's flat for many, many years. There you go. It's very different. Of course, being twins, mum would always put her hands behind her back and say, right, who wants to choose first, she would say. And I would turn to Paul and say, you can choose, or Paul would turn to me and say, you can choose. And that's how it was done. Here's another kingfisher in the kitchen. That one's next to Paul's radio which is usually tuned in to classical music there you go yeah many years ago it was the techno, it was the full on hardcore but I like classical music right now Settles me down. Okay, here's a small little gallery to my dad, who was a bit of a legend in the SAS. 
22 years. So he's been around, he's done quite a fair bit. That there is A Squadron. And that's my dad parachuting in the Adriatic Cup. There he is. Corporal T.G. Jickles lands close in. And there he is up there again. Looks like me. And my Uncle Mick gave me that one up there. And that one up there I just recently went to see a friend of the family, Joe Locke, who was in the SES with my dad. And that picture, it's not made up, they're actual jumpers. Because he had that picture and he had all the signatures of the jumpers. I said, oh, Joe, <laughs> I said, that's a proper picture then. <laughs> those are proper guys. He goes, yeah, those, these are the signatures of the jumpers, he said. And you could be fooled for thinking that that was just made up by the artist, but it's not. That was actually duplicated from probably a photograph. So they're actual jumpers. And my dad was known as Jump Master Jick. One of the finest free fallers in the world once. So why did I show you my dad? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, the Kingfisher is in my life because of my dad. In 1989, my dad died of cancer. First, 7th of the 1st, 1989. Long time ago now. But he'd left the regiment of just a few years before and he'd always been like this agile kind of uh, SAS guy you know he was our hero he was, he was our mentor and then he dies of cancer five stone in weight it was really quite tragic and on the day uh, Lofty Wiseman was there on the day Joe Locke was there on the day Joe who uh, I spoke of just now. Here's Joe, look, I'll show you Joe. <laughs> this is signed as well. Joe, Joe signed this the other day, the other week. That's Joe Locke. And that's a famous picture online too. That's in the Dofar Rebellion. That's a sniper rifle. But Joe signed that, his signature's in there. And I'm really honoured to have that. Paul found this in a gallery. He met the artist. And he said to the artist, I know this chap. He goes, I know this chap quite well. Well, very well. He said, I'll buy two copies. He said, I'll buy, I'll buy two of these. He said, I'll take one to Joe and I'll buy one for myself. When Paul died, I went to see Joe and I said, can you sign it? And he signed it. So yeah, Joe was there when my dad died, and a few other family members, Uncle Pete, Auntie June, this, that and the other, it was a good send off. I mean, on the day, you know, in the hospital room, where he was. And uh, when he was being treated, there was a pond outside his hospital room, and this kingfisher used to, used to visit uh, daily. And my dad was a bit of a bird man, he liked the birds and it used to lift his spirit up because evidently he was ill, he wasn't very well. So to see this kingfisher really did make him feel that life was beautiful regardless of him having cancer. Of course, when he died, Lofty Wiseman, that is, who wrote the SAS Survival Handbook, 
Remem remembered this, remembered the, the fact that the bird used to visit, because Lottie used to visit Dad. And in memory of Dad, he bought Mum a kingfisher, a statue of a kingfisher. Just to say, you know, he was a wonderful man and life is still beautiful. You know, uh, remember the spirit of the man. Remember uh, what a good soul he was, you know. Remember what his interests were. The following Christmas, he bought her another one. Joe Locke painted a kingfisher. <laughs> then mum bought some kingfishers. Then we bought some kingfishers. And throughout the years, kingfishers have emerged in our family home, in my mum's home. Of course, when Paul and I were struggling with drugs and drink many years ago, we used to sit beside the river and we used to hear kingfishers first before we, before we saw them usually flying low in resolute flight. And we used to go, ah, a kingfisher somewhere. And then we'd spot it and our spirit would lift and we'd feel our dad's presence all of a sudden. And it really became our totem. And we began to read about kingfishers and really take an interest in them. And we used to observe them. We used to be able to observe them fishing and courting and mating. And we became very, very adept at, at uh, knowing where they could be seen. So kingfishers became our, our totem and our mascot. We did rave pies. And they were shut down by the police. And... Uh, Many years later, when we wanted to start promoting again, we set up a company, a limited company. Now, we didn't know what to call the limited company at the time, but we went through various ideas and we ended up with this amazing name. Absolute fabulous name. It was called the Turquoise Sound Company. And it was named after the Kingfisher because, as I said, we used to hear it first before seeing it fly in resolute flight. So, the name, the Turquoise Sound Company, became synonymous with that pure resonance of sound. It became synonymous with uh, what inspired our music, and that was the natural world. The natural world inspired our love for music, our love for sound. And we came up with the name Turquoise Sound Company, and we needed a logo designed. And the natural choice was a kingfisher. Well, in order to launch this logo, in order to introduce this logo to the environment, we did an exhibition, a sound technology exhibition in Hereford, in Hereford City Centre. And we called it Sound Evolution. But to raise the finances for it, we did a swim, which Lofty Wiseman adjudicated. Well, it was only 3,000 metres. Wasn't, wasn't a big swim at all. And Paul and I were swimmers, you see. And Lottie turned to us and said, ah, he said, he said, how about a marathon swim, he said. He said, eight hours. And we turned to Loft and we said, all right, then. yeah, we'll do that, Loft. <laughs> so we did an eight-hour marathon swim in order to raise the finances for the exhibition. 24,000 metres we swam, <laughs> which is more than most people can hike or run or even cycle. So, yeah, it was a really Full on swim and we raised all the money we needed for this exhibition and to get the logo designed we didn't have the money to pay for it and we didn't want public money we wanted to remain private independent so we raised the money many people sponsored our swim and we managed to pay for the design of this logo the logo that you see here now which was designed by a guy called kevin kimber who is one of the finest illustration artists in the country. He does work for the BBC, he does work for the Book Fair, and, and uh, Frankfurt Book Fair, that is, and a whole host of other clients. So what you see there is hand-painted by one of the top illustration artists in the country, Kevin Kimber. Check out his uh, website link below. So now you know what the kingfisher means to me and what it meant to Paul. It meant a great deal. It was a healing journey. The kingfisher was a healing journey for us. 
You know, it all started way back when my dad died. Then we got full on into the drugs and the drink, and we were really in a mess. You know, we were out on the street all the time. You know, we were begging, we were eating out the bins, we were filthy dirty. All our friends were either heroin addicts, crack addicts, alcoholics, you know, pill poppers, powder sniffers, whatever, you know, the lost, the hurt, the wonderful, the not so wonderful. So yeah, it was a healing journey and the Kingfisher brought light to our life when we needed it. Fast forward many years now, and Paul's died. Not just my dad, but my twin brother, my dear twin. And it's been one heck of a year. It's been so painful. I didn't think I was gonna make it. I didn't wanna be here. I wanted to be with Paul, the magnetic. Some of you can, and do you know what, a statistic. This is a statistic for you. Um, 50% of surviving twins that experience twin loss, 50% die within two years of their twin loss. That's a really shocking statistic. Now, the statistic doesn't share with you whether or not that's through suicide. It doesn't stipulate how or what or why. It just presents the facts. But nevertheless, it's still a shocking fact. It's been tough, man. It's been hard. The, mag the magnetic tendency pull towards Paul has been really strong. So yeah, uh, I'm still here, 11 months on, and I've received another Kingfisher painting from my Aunt Val this time. And I love my Aunt Val, she's great. All right, Mark, she's like that, you know. They're all Northern, as you see. They're from, up, they're from the Scunthorpe, Scunthorpe, and Barton upon Umber. My Uncle Brian and my Uncle Mick and, you know, my cousins, Michelle and Darren and all the rest up there. They're all, they're all great people. And my dad was like that. So, I'm really keen to see what this painting is like. Because my Uncle Mick's been talking about it. He's been ringing me, you see. Got this painting, Mark, he said. He said, I went round to see Aunt Belle the other day, and she was going to chuck it out, he said. He said, oh no, Val, he said, I know where there's a good home for that, he said. Probably not a very good impression. He said, just hang on to it. So, Aunt Val hung on to it, and uh, here it is, <laughs> posted through my door. Uncle Mick knows what kingfishers mean to us. And of course, a lot of these sightings took place on the River Wye. And uh, my channel, Paul's channel too, is Wye Explorer. And uh, I took it from the Turquoise Sand Company and transferred it over to the Wye Explorer because it felt right. And it appears right because, you know, the River Wye, the rivers are synonymous with uh, the Kingfisher. It's, it's the habitat of the Kingfisher. And what I've done is I've... I've um, put to its rear um, an image of a compass to indicate four directions, which is the outdoors part of it. Synonymous indicating, you know, that it's overland too. So that's what you have there is an image which is synonymous with sound, which is synonymous with healing, which is synonymous with determination. The outdoors, because it essentially saved our lives. It turned our lives around the outdoors. It's synonymous with legendary figures in the SAS, named, you know, Terry Jickles and Lofty Wiseman. Uh, my Uncle Pete, even, Pete McManaman. You know, I don't want to forget my Uncle Pete. Or my Uncle Len, who was in the original SAS, way back in the Second World War. So, um, yeah. Some legendary people brought that Kingfisher logo into being. So it's got a lot of power. A lot of energy. So there's a big story behind it. So let's see... Um, 
Let's see what this Kingfisher looks like. In, it's going to feel great. I know it is. My Aunt Val sent it. Sent, sent it. Well, my Uncle Mick sent it. My Aunt Val painted it. So let's have a look, eh? Let's see, um, let's see what it looks like. I'm really keen to know. Okay. There's the painting inside there. Let's have a look. Whoop. Yeah, he's framed it. He's framed it. Uh, there's a beautiful letter here. Okay, so he's evidently protected the painting. Well, let's just <laughs> here it is. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Now that's been painted by my Aunt Val. My dad's sister. Oh, look at that. Oh, Aunt Val, that's beautiful. That's fantastic. I can feel the organic nature of that. That means so much to me. Wow. How about that? Paul, you'd love this. I know you're loving this, mate. I talk to Paul. When I look at this sculpture, I talk to Paul. Because there's photographs down there. And this is his sculpture. Paul? You'd love this, mate. Beautiful picture of a kingfisher. Sent by Aunt Val. There you go, bro. How about that? Oh man. Now for those of you that don't know, a kingfisher is otherwise known as Alcido Attis. And it's reputedly got powers over the sea, it's able to calm the sea. That's in mythology now. I mean, as far as reality is concerned, the kingfisher is a tropical migrant. It migrated into the Northern Hemisphere thousands of years ago. And that's why it's got these wonderful tropical colors. But it's adapted well to the environment here. Also, one of the most surprising facts about a kingfisher is that the colour turquoise isn't the result of the pigment in its feathers, it's the result of sunlight. You see, when you see a kingfisher kind of out of sunlight, it looks really dull. You know, kind of dark green, dull. But in the sunlight, wow! You see all that beautiful turquoise. 
So it's a bit of a solar powered bird. Me and Paul would say that. <laughs> We'd have a bit of a laugh about that. It's a bit of a solar powered bird. Another story. But um, my family up north, they've been really very good. So if you're listening, guys, love you with all my heart. Thank you very much for this wonderful picture, this Kingfisher picture, Aunt Val, if you're listening. And Uncle Mick, big thank you for saving it. Uh, I'm amazed that this picture was going to get thrown out. And as you said, there was a good home for it, and there is. So thank you. Big thank you. I hope you guys learned something <clears throat> about the Kingfisher logo and about what the Kingfisher means to us. It's dynamic, you see, the Kingfisher. It has a dynamism. And that's what the Y Explorer is about. It's about approaching the outdoors in a healthy, clean, dynamic way. You know, because I don't drink, I don't do drugs, and I don't smoke. I'm completely teetotal. So is Paul. <coughs> and that's how I approach it. The hardest brew I drink out there, and I used to drink a lot of special brew, <laughs> trust me. <coughs> the hardest brew I drink now is Tetley. <laughs> that's my little joke. But yeah, so that's the background on the Kingfisher. I've told you a little bit about the mythology, I've told you a little bit about the pigment and its feathers, colour turquoise. I've told you about my family, how it started with my father. With the SAS, Lofty Wiseman, Joe Locke. Told you about Turquoise Sound Company, our events, the dreaming, the transference from there over to the White Explorer. So it's got a big story, big history behind it. So that's it. The Kingfisher, Alcido Atis. My logo. Our logo for the Y Explorer. Alright guys, that's about it for now. It's been good sharing it with you. It's been really good. I thank you for watching. Thank you all for watching. Uh, without you guys, just simply wouldn't have a channel, would I? So, you know, thumbs up to you guys, alright? Big thumbs up. As far as the channel's concerned, if you want to like, please do. Please like. We all like the likes. And uh, the comments, well, you know me, I always respond and I like a good conversation. And if you want to subscribe, guys, please do. Uh, I look forward to your company. All right. That's it from me. And the Kingfisher. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs>